This is um, a sheath I built for uh, a bibby knife. I'll show you the bibby knives in a minute. I've just finished a batch of four. I've got to um, finish this sheath off. Uh, it's been wet, wet formed. It's been dried. It's been in the dryer for like two and a half days. So, don't know if you can hear that. Stop that D-ring from rattling. But it's hard. It's formed the shape of the knife. Um, individually fitted to its to each individual knife, um, and I've just got to finish off the edge. I I use a product called Edge Coat. Um, I like to do something else with the edge as well to make it a bit more resilient. So the first thing I'm going to do is prepare the uh, the leather to, to accept the edge coat and. I want to smooth off. It's already been uh, burnished before when, when it was wet when I wet moulded it. But I was wanted there's, there's still a few fibres that need to be sort of taken down and smoothed out, sort of thing. And the burnishing just prepares the leather. This is a burnishing tool, and it, it just neatens things up and gives you. Uh, a nice finish. Like all things, the surface finish, to get the surface finish looking good, you've got to have what's underneath it good as well. So that's that's not too bad now. Feels smooth. Then what I do I get a Q-tip and I apply the edge coat with the Q-tip. So a good coating of uh, edge coat on the Q-tip. Then paint it on the edge. Now what's happening is because the leather is very dry, it's been in the, as I say, been in the dryer for about two and a half days. This first coat, a lot of it is being drawn into the leather fibres. The burnishing up to a point does sort of glaze the leather in places, but it still seems to penetrate through that glaze and sort of bond with that surface of leather. So you want the leather to be really dry when you um, put this on, in my opinion. And just go over the edge. There's a, there's a distinct line that I can see. I don't know if you can see it on the video. But that line is where I've burnished two. And, and I go to that, that line with the Q-tip. It's quite... A good way to apply the edge coat because the Q-tip is quite an accurate thing. Let's put a bit more. So that's the first coat on, and it's. It does dry quite quick and it's beginning to dry now. But whilst you've got that still little bit of dampness to it, I put another coat on. It's a bit like um, when you're painting a wall, you want to keep a wet edge. The same applies to this. That way you get a nice even coat. So anyway, that one is now done. And 
Now for the next step I want this to be completely dry. So I'll put this one aside. And I'll get one that I did earlier. Right, this is one I did earlier. It's now completely dry. And what I'm going to do, because it claims to be waterproof, it says, you know, uh, it says just um, edge coat dries to a medium gloss, allow to dry completely, and then buff gently with a soft cloth for a brighter finish. But what I find is best is to is to buff it now. Just to give it a bit of a gloss, but I found in the past when it's got wet that it, it has actually um, started to run, so it's like a dye. So I like to seal it, and what I use to seal it is a product called Resiline. And this is like an acrylic finish, quite durable. So I use another Q tip. Soak it in some Vaseline. And then I apply that onto the edge. Now at this, at this stage it looks a bit unsightly because it's got like a milky colour to it. But when it dries, it dries absolutely clear and you won't see that. And it's um, just giving you that bit of... Uh, waterproofness on the edge so that's the uh, that's the edge all uh, finished just leave it to dry again before I then go on to uh, finish the sheaf with the uh, the um, product that I use in this case it will be uh, golden mean coil Quick note on finishing the sheaves, so I know some of you are probably going to ask. As I said earlier, I use a golden ming coil as the main waterproofer. I also use a very tiny amount of neats for oil, but I wouldn't recommend that as ongoing maintenance you use neats for oil because it will soften the leather. Hello, my dog down there, that you get to see me. Hey? It will, she's got gunky eyes at the moment, I think she's had a cold. Um, it will soften the leather and you don't want that because you want the leather to remain quite, quite hard. Um, I've already applied uh, a small thin coating of um, golden mean coil now uh, and then I'm just simply going to just buff it with plenty of elbow grease. Just rub it. And this generates the friction generates heat, which helps melt the uh, golden mink coil into the surface fibres of the leather, and it feeds the leather. So you want to be giving it a few, a few minutes of uh, of working and a good dollop of elbow grease. The other important ingredients, of course, is the elbow grease. Um, if you go on to uh, many of the uh, leather work websites, you'll be able to order yourself a pot of elbow grease. That uh, that works wonders. Well, there's the four baby knives in question. These three are more or less identical. This is the only different one. Mm. It's only different because it's got red liners, whereas these have all got black. Uh, they've all got G10 liners. So the red liner knife first. Uh, 
I love the Bibby knife. It's uh, just slightly smaller than the classic. It takes exactly the same amount of time to build a Bibby as it does a, does a classic. The same processes are involved. Uh, you know, stabilised handle scales. I tend to fit all these with leveless bolts. So there's a there's a, a shoulder on the bolt inside, and there's a which gives you a, a mechanical bond together with the um, the epoxy, which leads to a very uh, resilient handle. So this one, uh, three mil knife, red G10 liners, stabilised massa birch, O1 carbon steel blade, which has been triple tempered, and it's around about 59 HRC. They're all the same. All the sheaves are the same with the uh, logo on the back of the dangler and also impressed into the uh, the sheaf so I'll run through them all individually and then you'll get to see them again stabilised massa birch black G10 liners Handle is nice and comfortable. I've got sort of uh, fairly large hands in a way, and there's plenty of uh, plenty of room on that handle for large hands. They are a bit stiff in the sheaves at the moment, as you'd expect. They will, that will loosen off with time. This one's got nice uh, figuring in the in the handle. Obviously, the handles will differ because they're it's natural material, and uh, that's never the same, is it? It's quite random. one 